Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and yes, another video dealing with MDT 2013 and Windows 8.1. I finally finished our 12 part little mini series of how to get yourself up and running with MDT and to deploy a Windows 7 8. Point, actually, a Windows 8.1, which you could also do a Windows 7. Uh, but today is all about USB, how to create a bootable USB. Because uh, a lot of people nowadays don't like to use the Pixie Boot. Uh, you want to do offline, you want to have a flash drive or a CD, plug it in, boot it up, get installed, and that's it. So let's get started. So within our MDT um, server, there's actually an option to create a media boot. So if you're going to advanced configuration, you're going to get an option that says media. By default, it's already blank because you never created a media. So let's create our first media. We're going to right click on that folder, click on new media, and let's give it a path. Now, I have a partition within my virtual machine, and it's on the D drive, actually on the E drive. D is my CD. And I'm going to create a new folder called media. So this is where I'm going to store all my media. And I'm going to press OK and you can leave some comments if you want and the next part is up to you I normally do everything so uh, selection profile if you have a specific profile for a specific hardware that you're pushing out this custom USB this is where you pick it but if you want everything to be part of your flash drive you pick everything now if you do everything that means you have to have a pretty large USB for this to work I'm using an 8 gig and because my deployment is not really huge with a lot of applications and a lot of drivers it would do but if you guys have like 5 or 10 or 20 applications or uh, many 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 drivers it is best that you do a external hard drive or a bigger flash drive maybe a 32 or 64 bit so for this video we're gonna do everything we're gonna click on next and next and it's really seamless it's real fast and um, once it loads up we got to do a couple of other things and we're gonna hit finish here and as you can see we have our first media within our media node uh, let's right click on it and let's go to properties now within properties you're gonna to get to general it gives you the basic uh, rundown of what have we done and what platforms does this flash drive support um, does it support an 86 environment or a 64 environment I'm pushing out a 64 bit environment and that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna uncheck to generate a 86 boot image I just want a 64 bit uh, if by default this is the name of the ISO it creates you can change it to whatever you want like a company standard name I'm gonna keep it as is it also has its own rules remember custom settings I and I file you can set and customize it the way you want it I'm gonna leave everything as is and let's go as Windows PE Windows PE is more uh, you're able to modify the 86 and 64 bit platform you can even change the background image if you want specify the scratch disk uh, this is all up to you I like to leave everything as is if you go to the features again if you want to deploy any specific features this is where you add it I normally like to add Windows PowerShell because hey Windows PowerShell is always pretty cool drivers and patches again I'm doing all drivers and packages if not you can actually choose what you want and hit apply once you hit apply I press OK now the next thing that you need to do is right click on the media and go to update media content now what this does it grabs everything inside your deployment your applications folder your scripts your um, updates your operating system and puts it all into the specific root which we define which was for me the E drive inside the media folder now once this is done we need to take this flash drive and create that bootable environment within this USB to boot to it alright so let this run and I catch you guys when this is done alright guys so we're done uh, it looks like the process has been completed updating the media at least and uh, we're gonna press finish and once we click on finish that's it not really we need to get our trusted little flash drive make sure it has enough space and uh, we're gonna minimize our MDT uh, console and we're gonna get into the location where I dropped everything which is here media 
and it has everything so if you go to your content and you go into boots as you can see it has everything that it needs for it to run properly the deploy has your applications the operating system has the operating system that you need to push out which for me is the 64-bit 8.1 pro of windows right so the next thing that you need to do is convert this iso this one right here into a flash drive now i'm using a cool utility core rufus and i'm going to double click on it and it is free so it's awesome to do that and i'm going to hook this up into the computer there you go you heard it right and uh, I have my virtual machine set up for it to be picked up so that's awesome um, what is this it needs updates so I'm not gonna push the update right now I'm just gonna close this close it right I want to pick my ISO image my ISO image is actually the light touch media so let's get into that partition and grab that ISO there we go press open and I do want a quick let's call this uh, I don't know MDT boots right that's pretty cool MDT boot uh, we're gonna create an extended label and icon files whatever path well, okay so we're gonna start and we're gonna press OK because it's gonna destroy everything that's inside that flash drive to create our boo boo flash drive right uh, I, the only reason I like using this program is because it's really straightforward. You don't really need to do any command prompts or, and it's self-contained, meaning like it's an exe file that you can take it anywhere, anytime. Double click on it and it will work with no problem. So those are the best. Again, really, it really depends on how much information you have inside your deployment. For me, I only have two programs, Skype and Firefox and Windows 8.1 operating system and a couple of drivers in my task sequence and that's it. But if you guys have more, this process is probably going to take a little longer. So uh, I'll catch you guys once this is done. All right, guys. So the bootable USB drive was completed. Uh, I didn't show you guys that it was complete. I do apologize for that. But our flash drive uh, using Rufus was done. Rather than me booting into a virtual infrastructure, I said to myself, Let's boot it into a physical hard drive because you guys are going to be booting into a hard drive, right? So I have a Latitude uh, D630 old school laptop. There's no cables right behind it, okay? There's no Ethernet cords hooked up to my network or anything. So I'm going to put the USB at the back of the laptop. And let's see if I can boot inside my MDT infrastructure. So I'm going to power it on and let's press F12. And make sure that your workstation on your laptop is configured to boot into a USB device. So once this loads up into our boot menu, uh, we're going to get a nice little option right here on the upper left hand side stating to pick either a NIC or go into the boot manager or the BIOS or and the USB. Okay guys, so once you get to the boot menu, you're going to see this nice little option that says USB storage device. Got to make sure you enable that within uh, the BIOS setting. So I'm going to pick that and our flash drive is there. It's going to say press any key to boot from the USB. So I'll press the space bar. It doesn't matter. Uh, as you can see, hopefully you guys can see it says loading file. So that's always a good thing. Uh, once it loads up the file, you're going to see depending on how you customize your custom settings INI file with the within the media boot um, you're probably not gonna see the welcome screen but I didn't really do any customization remember guys the your MDT deployment custom settings INI file is different from your media custom INI file there's two separate media uh, custom INI files when it comes to your media as well as your MDT deployment okay so if you make any changes within your custom settings INI file within your MDT deployment node and you, you, you deploy your media and you're like, didn't I configure this not to show up? Yeah, it's not going to work. Why? Because you have to actually go into the custom settings INI file within your media to do the changes there as well. It doesn't trickle down to it, which is pretty weird. So as you can see, I didn't do any customization, so I did get the welcome. So when you click on this... If you guys have been tuning in with me, I love doing the Pixie Boot, and 
it will normally prompt me to log in into my deployment share but because we are offline again I'm offline I have no no wires anything other than the power cord and the flash drive it's not gonna prompt me to enter a uh, credentials to log into the deployment so uh, you guys probably can't see but uh, I got my Windows 8.1 task uh, I'm able to hit next and then from there it's going to basically do the computer name you enter the computer name so I'm going to do bj-usb and I'm going to hit next and hit next next again all this stuff is because I did not there you go you know I, I didn't do the custom settings i9 file so I'm going to see if I can bring it a little closer so you guys can see the information that I'm entering because you probably can't hardly see because of the lighting. All right, so you guys should see what's going on a little bit. So I'm gonna just install Firefox and I'm gonna hit uh, next. I'm gonna doing all this on the laptop. It wants me to uh, give the local administrative account on this machine a password. So I'm gonna give it a password. Uh, let's enter a nice little password. Remember, make sure that you remember the password. Oh, that's always a problem. Uh, hit next, and when you're ready, you hit begin. And that's it, guys. That it. you're deploying your custom WIM or Windows 8 offline. Not it's not going into the deployment share because I have no wires. So this is how you use a media boot. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you have any questions, leave it at the bottom of the description. Again, I'm gonna. Go to the website and uh, blog this. I'm going to post up all my notes so you guys can actually tune in and do what you need to do. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.